Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and we are from Brazil, but you guys in Spain, good morning, good afternoon. It's a pleasure for Bright Cities to be the organizing of this side event. I'm Raquel Cardamoni, I'm a smart city expert. I'm a professor in University of Campinas in Brazil, and I'm one of the founders of Bright Cities platform. So today, tomorrow city event, it's all about data changes everything. Uh, smarter infrastructure rules our world. So we are here. We were invited to present solution made in South America to challenges in global cities. This side event uh, seeks to highlight the opportunities and success stories about real solutions in Latin America cities while providing better urban service to their citizens. So uh, with me today, we have Fernanda Delgado, that's a professor and researcher in FGV Energy, Fundação Getúlio Vargas here in Brazil, and Bruno Batista, an active mobility analyst in WRI here in Brazil as well. So thank you guys very much um, for participating in this side event. And for today, each of the speakers are going to have 10 minutes to share their vision and their success stories. That, and after we are going to have 15 minutes for questions from you guys at the audience for today. So please feel free to send us questions during the presentations that we'll be and we will be glad to answer you all in the end. Uh, to start, I'm gonna start sharing with you a success story that we have here in Brazil that's uh, from Cataguases. Um, it is um, a project that Bright Cities developed here in Brazil with an um, energy company in, in order to make Cataguases, that is a small city in Minas Gerais, a 7,000 uh, people population, to become a smarter city uh, in the areas of energy and mobility. So, First, uh, we use uh, Bright Seeds platform that I'm going to share with you how it works to develop a diagnosis on the city using indicators, data, data on indicators based on the ISO. Uh, so today we have three main ISOs that is the standardization of cities indicators worldwide. We have the 37120, the 37 122 and the 37,123. Uh, these three standardization indicators of cities can uh, help us to identify what areas in the city we need to measure to understand how is the city in the sustainable areas, in the smart city area and the resilience. So I'm gonna share with you how it works and this case, this special case that we have here uh, using the platform, it's a real case, um, using what we call uh, the right sequence of how we need to, how we can improve cities. First, using data. So um, the platform, it's easy to use. Um, we upload uh, official data from worldwide, and I'm going to share with you the case especially here in Cataguases. So what we do is that we consolidate public official data using uh, as a map, the indicators on ISO. So here we have the city, the small city in Cataguases and we chose a small city so you guys can understand that we can make better cities they don't need to be the big cities. Any city can be upgraded and go towards a uh, smarter use. So uh, this is uh, Cataguases diagnosis. So we develop a diagnosis on 10 areas and we open each area using the data, the official data, the official source. We open each one uh, to see how can we, the city performance on each area. So let me just check here and use I'm gonna choose, uh, we have the deploy of each area in more than 160 indicator, but I'm gonna use 
uh, the area that we are focused on that was energy and uh, mobility. And I'm gonna use this because today we are, our speakers are gonna focus in these two areas. So Fernanda is gonna talk about and give us more technical information regarding projects in the energy area. And Bruno is gonna share with you us energy and mobility area. So uh, when we go to the indicators, uh, as an example, if we go to the energy, uh, we have here the list of what are the indicators that we need to see and to check in terms of performance of cities using ISO and to see how is the performance of each one in each indicators and how is uh, performing comparing to other cities. It's important to say that all these indicators on ISO it's aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as well. So that's why we use here ours to link both so we can have all cities going towards the same goals. Uh, so here we have, for example, the total electric energy use per capita of the city. Um, and here it's uh, the, the the light here saying is that it's yellow, so it's something that we can improve, we can make it more efficient in the city. And then we can see what are the solutions available worldwide that can help the city to implement and to better perform in these indicators. So this is an easy way uh, for us to identify what are the areas that the city needs to improve comparing to performance of other cities and what are the solutions that are available. It's important that to share with you that all this solution marketplace, it's available for free in Bright Cities platform. So any city can go here and can choose and see what are the solution available for the Uber challenge today. So it's a worldwide platform. So in the case, especially uh, specifically in the case of Cataguases, uh, we focus on the energy and mobility because the project was um, a group of stakeholders doing the project. And one of the stakeholders was a private sector company that was the energy company. Uh, so this was our focus. And it's important to say that because um, the whole Pro, I'm, I'm going to share with you really quick what we have as the results on this project, but it's important to share with you that this project was very complete because we had Bright Cities as a startup diagnosis on cities. We had a private company that's a local company in Cataguases with a, a, a big influence. We had the city hall involved in the project and we had the academy involved, the university, the local university. So we got the whole ecosystem of innovation involved in this project. What brought us good results in terms of making the city uh, closer to the smart city concept. concept. So now I'm sharing with you uh, what was this project it was in 2018 we started to developing this diagnosis. It's just taking a little bit to change here. Well, now we have. So it was an energy company, Energiza is the call of the, the, the company. It's important to bring that because it is a huge company here in Brazil, but it was founded in Cataguases. So the company wants to give back to the city um, in this project of how they could help the city to make better service to the citizens using the concept of uh, smart city. Uh, so we use as um, map, let's say like that, that's uh, the ISO of indicators of sustainable cities. So we use ISO 37120 to analyze and to make the diagnosis of the city. Uh, we focus on uh, the two areas, the energy and the mobility. 
And in the energy uh, area, we focus on the 37,122 ISO. These are the indicators that are uh, considering this ISO. But I'm going to share with you so only a few is examples to, of this. So this is the first one that uh, we analyze what were, was uh, the number of points of illumination uh, of the lights of the city. Um, and we didn't find that any of the lights were the public lights were using a better efficient uh, technology. So we implemented the smart street lightning. Uh, this is a complete project here that I'm going to show uh, that I'm showing that's uh, even a smart city expo congress suggestion. Uh, we didn't implement this complex uh, project yet, but it was implemented the first stage that was using a better and efficient public lightning. So this is, was uh, the first project uh, that was implemented and that's reaching uh, almost 40% of cost reduction in the city. And another very special project that was implemented after we did the diagnosis and the solution roadmap for Cataguazi City was to make the better efficient uh, energy in public buildings. Um, in Cataguas, there, there is 77 uh, public buildings and none of them at the moment of the diagnosis was using a better efficient uh, energy um, technology. So what we did is that we started a project and implemented a project that's called Ascender, it's lightning here uh, in Brazil. And uh, we started to implement this efficient energy in public buildings. So here is a picture of one of the schools, the public schools that was implemented. Not only we implemented a better use of the energy, but we use the communication and education to show to kids how to use better the energy. So it was a very special project. And today we have this implemented in others uh, public buildings in Cataguases. So this incentivates the, pro the project that gives and gives and uh, is the result on the cost re reduction for Cataguase city. In another project in mobility, uh, these were the indicators that we analyzed uh, in the city. So low pollution emissions vehicles, Share bicycles, uh, bicycles system, intelligent urban transportation, intelligent management of public uh, public transportation as well, and more three indicators. But um, I'm going to focus here uh, in the low pollu pollutant uh, emission vehicles in the municipality. So we introduce uh, for Cataguases uh, public. Um, cars for the public service, uh, use the electrical cars. So it was a project that was very special uh, and they start using for the, the public um, managers that we have for the city. So that was another project that is incentivizing uh, the city to understand what are the better solutions that we have today uh, and then incentivating other projects to go along with this. So these were uh, the two examples that I would like to share with you in terms of what are, was the results and what was the real solution implemented by uh, this project, this smart city projects for a small city. So we have this real case in terms of what is we are able to do uh, in solutions in smart city. So thank you. And now we're going to go deeper on the energy uh, area for our cities. And I'm going to call Fernanda Delgado that's here with us. That again is the professor and researcher in Fundação Getúlio Vargas here in Brazil. So thank you very much Fernanda for being with us. And please present all these uh, insights that you have on the energy area. Thank you, Raquel. Thank you for the invitation. Gracias por la invitación. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Uh, well, 
what can I say about energy in Brazil and energy as a whole here? Uh, this is the this is the 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 task that was given to me in order uh, to talk about the cities and the energy as a main composition for the economic development and how we are dealing with this economic growth and the expectation of economic growth and how we are gonna deal with energy, especially the natural gas here in Brazil. Well, uh, as everybody knows, we are dealing with a very uh, uh, different scenario right now, a very different environment right now is that we are in the middle of a pandemic and we're in the middle of uh, an economic recession. Due to so, we are not growing and we are not having any economic growth, but we are expecting to do so as soon as we, we get rid of this virus. And I guess all the countries are making the, their uh, programs with the, with the vaccination programs and Brazil is doing is the same. At the same time, we have our pre-salt here. I'm pretty sure you all have heard about the big reservoirs that we discovered on offshore here in Brazil, 300 kilometers from the coast with big reservoirs of oil and with natural gas associated to this. Well, here in Brazil, we have like 100 million cubic meters daily of uh, production of natural gas, but at the same time, we import natural gas from Bolivia and we import natural gas from LNG, from United States, from Qatar, from Trinidad Tobago, because we don't have this natural gas uh, uh, arriving on the places that we need it to arrive. We don't have the pipelines arriving on the correct places actually inside Brazil. Brazil is very big as everybody knows. So right now we are in a very huge program in Brazilian government to incentivize the use of natural gas and the production of this gas that is associated to the oil uh, of the pre south offshore. So what we are doing right now, the government and the private companies are trying uh, to monetize this huge amount of gas that we are going to have from the pre south in the next years. We are expecting to double this produc production. So we produce uh, 100 million cubic meters daily. So we are expecting until 2025, 2027 uh, to have two uh, 100 million cubic uh, uh, meters, cubic meters uh, daily of natural gas production. In order to have this to come to the coast and to have it clean and to put in pipelines and to distribute it to the cities and to the factors and uh, uh, to everybody else inside Brazil, we need pipelines, we need the, the, the gas refineries here in Brazil. So we need new regulations because here in Brazil, we have the monopoly of Petrobras uh, since the 50s, and now we are actually uh, getting rid of this monopoly because Petrobras is selling their assets either from uh, natural gas, either from onshore uh, assets. This is a very good thing because when Petrobras is selling uh, their assets, other companies are buying, smaller companies are buying, and this is smaller companies uh, actually in um, shallow water and onshore, they are bringing jobs, they are bringing technology, they are bringing uh, economic activity to the uh, interior of Brazil. And this is good because they are bringing uh, natural gas resources, they are bringing uh, all these economic activities to the cities that were uh, once just with Petrobras, very low economic activity because these small reservoirs were not more of interest of Petrobras. Petrobras is interested in pre salt, is interested in big reservoirs, in big oil discovery. So these small companies are being uh, attracted right now. And this is the big plan of uh, uh, the country, of the uh, 
the energetic planning of the country and all the policies that we are the Brazil is making right now is to diversify this environmental, this uh, uh, entrepreneur environmental in order to attract this smaller companies that would bring jobs to the interior of the country. This natural gas that we are expecting to, uh, uh, to get to monetize and to give a more uh, interest use is something that we are expecting to bring what we are calling the new industrialization of Brazil. Right now, Brazil, the industry in Brazil just represent just 15% of our GDP. In the 80s, in the 1980s, the, uh, the, indus the industry represents more than 30% of Brazil GDP. So we have a movement of having less industries in Brazil and more uh, uh, farm business in Brazil, more agriculture in Brazil, which is good for a side. Brazil is the biggest uh, uh, exporter of soybeans, but it's not that good because the industry is a big uh, um, employer here in Brazil. So we need to get more jobs because of this pandemic. And this is good for uh, the development of the cities. As I said, this is a very big plan of the government regarding to giving jobs into the development of the cities of the interior. Actually, the big oil companies now, they are in the middle of their struggling with the last um, the last uh, report from the International Energy Agency that said that we cannot drill any more wells uh, from 2021 if we want to achieve the net zero uh, emissions in 2050. But I guess this is not a reality for uh, the underdevelopment countries as Brazil, as we still need a lot of energy here for us to develop our uh, city. So I guess we still have a lot of things to be done, especially when I'm talking about natural gas. Brazil has a lot of potential to make uh, also uh, biofuels. Uh, we are very known as our ethanol program that we started in the 80s. Here in Brazil, almost all of our fleet, all of our cars are bio, bio, uh, uh, biofuel. We can use either ethanol or gasoline. And when the prices of ethanol are really good, we use ethanol in our cars. And actually we are, we have a new program called Renova Bio right now that is to incentivize the use of the ethanol here. Well, things are going in a good track in order to have more energy in, uh, especially natural gas here in Brazil. And as all of all other countries, we are struggling with uh, the pandemic. I guess the policies that the Ministry of Mines and Energy are going in the right, in the right direction, of course, as all the civil society, we always, we always need to uh, want to, things to be more fast and things to be more well done, but the things are, are uh, going. The perspective from underdeveloped countries are always different from developed countries regarding electrification, regarding uh, biofuels, regarding uh, CCS and things like that. But actually now we are really focused on developing the natural gas market and uh, betting on that for the development of the interior of uh, Brazil. I guess this is something uh, just to start for uh, uh, the discussion. Raquel, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation again. Thank you, Fernanda, was the perfect timing. So thank you very much for the relevant uh, information and technical information on how the energy area can be used to develop the economy of the cities. And in consequence, consequence can uh, help to improve the public uh, service. So thank you very much. And now we're gonna have a view on uh, solutions and projects uh, uh, that Bruno Batista is gonna share with us um, with all the projects that were developed on the R uh, WRI Brazil organization. So Bruno. Thank you, Raquel. Uh, so following these two uh, great presentations, 
Uh, okay, so my name is Bruno Batista. I'm talking from Porto Alegre here in Brazil as well. And I'm part of the active mobility team at WRI Brazil. So just a quick context, uh, WRI Brazil is part of the World Resources Institute, which is an organization that works across a global network to develop practical solutions that improves people's life and protect nature, uh, focusing in various areas such as cities, forests, and climate. Uh, we have offices in more than 10 countries, but today I, I want to talk a little bit more about the concept of complete streets and the work that we have been doing here in Brazil with various Brazilian cities in the last few years. So I have prepared just a few slides for that, and I, I'm going to share my screen. Just a second. Okay. All right, I'm sharing my screen, and I think you, you all can see now. All right, so talking a little bit about the, the complete streets and this new paradigm of street design. Uh, first of all, uh, what, what makes a street more or less complete? Uh, this concept started in, U, in the US, uh, I believe it has now already like 15 years. And it, they, the planners in the cities, they started to think uh, every street in the city uh, in all its aspects. So here is, there's a lot of examples. Uh, and we started to change a little bit from the past where all the, the traffic planning, the engineering, was made mostly focused on cars. And so to think this project as of a complete street in uh, considering all the users is essential and all the, uh, the aspects uh, regarding safety, accessibility and comfort. And not only for drivers, but for every user, for pedestrians, for cyclists, for public transportation, etc. So trying to connect that with the concept of smart cities uh, uh, I was thinking like, what is the city that we want in 20 years? We can have like a city uh, with a street design similar to today, what we have today, the image on the, the left. Uh, okay, we are advancing to, towards uh, electric vehicles, towards decarbon decarbonization of the cities, of this, to, uh, towards a, a more sustainable mobility. But our cities can look like, just like they are looking today, with uh, electric vehicles. Would that be enough for the quality of life of everyone? Uh, or maybe we can go towards something like the image in the right, uh, where we uh, divide our, our public space uh, among all the users and we, we think uh, in more sustainable ways how to, to move around in our cities. So, Trying to, to use this, com this context, we created uh, and we worked in the last four years with a network of cities, more than 20 cities in Brazil, uh, trying to implement pilot projects uh, in all these cities uh, of complete streets, trying to use these as uh, study cases uh, to, to influence not only the cities, but all the, the surrounding cities of the, these areas uh, to, to try to make this shift in the, in the municipalities. And right now, after four years, we are almost launching a very interesting report of, uh, of complete streets with many Brazilian cases. Because in the past, we used like to start these presentations always uh, having examples from, from developed countries, from Europe, from the US, and now we wanted to do something in Latin America. So that, that, that was the idea behind the project uh, using this concept. So I, I don't want to uh, take too much time, but I still have uh, some images, some of before and after projects to illustrate a little bit of these changes uh, to have more uh, safe, more accessible and more comfortable streets for everyone. This is uh, an example of a street before and after in an intersection of a street here in Porto Alegre, from where I'm, I'm speaking from. Uh, and this uh, process with the, with the tool of uh, tactical urbanism, trying to have like low cost interventions first with mostly paint and bollards. Uh, it was a, a really successful case. 
and change the dynamic of the, the street, reduce the speeds, and uh, people from the community approved in, in, in general. And now this same street art is going to have like a new definitive project with physical infrastructure, with like extended sidewalks, with concrete and everything. Another example, like a small one, uh, I always like to bring this case because every street can be a complete street, like in uh, a very, like in a very big avenue or a very small city in a local community. This is a, a entrance of a school in Campinas city. And they used to have a problem with like uh, parents uh, picking up their children. And so all this project organized the entrance of the school and provided comfort for everyone. This is a huge uh, street in Niterói, which is a city right next to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and they, they changed the whole design of the city. They created squares, uh, these plazas, they had cycle lanes, and they organized the, like, uh, also in special area for public transportation. And it has been really important for, for the whole mobility in the city. So that's like an example of a big, bigger uh, scale project. Okay, so yeah, uh, beyond like the physical street, complete streets represent a change in our understanding of street values, uh, beyond only, as I said before, the flow of vehicles. It's about creating a culture and policies that allow safe and efficient transport choices. And this goes like, uh, this makes the shift from that old paradigm, the way that we planned our cities, focused on cars, in the last hundred years and all the the negative uh, results from that uh, and now we are having this transformation period uh, towards a new paradigm where everyone can be more sustainable but also have like a better quality of life in cities and finally why now uh, because most cities most countries uh, recognize that the current system does not meet citizens citizens needs uh, especially considering mobility, considering air quality, and also equity, equity and accessibility for everyone. So uh, COVID also helped pushing that, uh, and also the climate crisis. So all the this context that the, the world is living in uh, right now uh, is uh, making many cities uh, try to, to push for that, to, to provide uh, changes for their citizens. I think I uh, try to be fast for us to have some time for discussion, but that's it. Thank you very much Great. for the invitation and let's have some, some conversation. Great, Bruno, thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, uh, with us uh, solutions and I really like when you say that every street can be a complete street. And I would add a better streets for citizens because one of the main problem worldwide is the fatalities that we have uh, in the mobility area that we have in the streets. And it's um, a very um, high problem here in Brazil as well. So uh, these implementations and these modifications that you show us showing that we can make this better. Uh, so thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, Fernanda, for the information on the energy side as well. So now we are going to start the debate, uh, let's say like that. That's the questions that we receive uh, from the audience. And I will start, and um, since Bruno just uh, sent us and show us the solutions, um, I will start with one question that is, Brazil is the fourth uh, largest in traffic accidents uh, fatalities. What are the biggest challenges in your vision, Bruno? And what is the positive results? Uh, you show some of them that you have had on your projects uh, that we can use as a benchmark to change this reality, not only in Brazil, but worldwide. OK, uh, sure. So. Road safety is totally connected to complete streets and this concept. And I would say like that today, one of the, the biggest topics that uh, cities are trying to address is to reduce speeds. Because uh, 
high speeds in cities, it's like totally connected to fatalities and to the to the deaths that we have in Brazil, uh, unfortunately in very high numbers. And movements towards uh, reducing speeds uh, to in most uh, in most uh, avenues of the avenues and small streets and collector and arterials to less than 50 kilometers per hour would be ideal to have like only a few more express uh, express streets or, or avenues in the city with 60 for example but most of the other ones with 50 or less that would be ideal also to have low speed zones so but not only like it's not only changing the how can I say not, not, not only changing like the number and the sign also like changing the way the city the streets are designed creating a, a calmer environment for everyone so that would be essential and also to get uh, together with that to keep like having the discussion this discussion with uh, the population because sometimes these changes can be very uh unwelcome for for everyone it's, it's still a very uh it's still very polemic so but it's something that needs to be done Great. So uh, it's very important to engage the citizens in all this transformation, right? So that's, I think, an uh, uh, important step uh, in terms of making them understand why you know, we are uh, implementing this solution and it's for the best uh, for all. So very nice. There is an example that you show in changing the structure of the city, uh, of that street uh, with, where the parents can get the children in a safe uh, way. So that um, for sure in decrease uh, the chance on fatalities there. So very nice. Thank you very much, Bruno. And when we go now um, uh, for a question for Fernanda, uh, Fernanda talked about the zero emissions. Uh, the large economies committed uh, to achieve the zero emissions by 2050. So the energy sector is a major contributor to emissions. What is the importance and the speed of the world energy transition to achieve this goal, Fernanda? If you can talk a little bit more about that. Thank you for the question, uh, Raquel. Uh, well, the energy transition is uh, uh, the main way uh, to achieve it. And it's something that we have to understand that is different when you, depending on the geography that we are dealing with. So Brazil has, uh, has committed itself with some reductions and the energy sector is of course responsible for some reduction, but here in Brazil is something important to mention that uh, the, the forestation of the Amazon and everything related to the Amazon is the sense is more sensitive to the, the reduction uh, of emissions for us than really the energy sector because our energy matrix is 80% renewable. We have uh, the hydraulic, we have biomass, we have ethanol, we have biodiesel. So the energy sector is not actually a problem for us here. Despite the fact that our hydraulic uh, uh, system is already on the top, we already, we don't have much how to grow on our hydraulic uh, power here in Brazil. And we are now growing with uh, um, natural gas thermal power plants. But in the, as, as the same time uh, uh, as to say our energy matrix is not gonna, it's not gonna be actually much more uh, 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 dirty than, than, than uh, it's not gonna be less clean than it's now. So the energy, the, what I mean is that the energy sector for Brazil is not actually a problem right now, despite the fact that we have some goals in order to improve the use of biofuels uh, for uh, uh, our fleet, despite the fact that we have some, uh, some goals regarding the emissions, but our main goals are regarding the deforestation and uh, regarding the Amazon care right now. 
Yes, exactly. We are in a very, very good position here in Brazil, right? And in terms of renewable energy. So let's use that and let's uh, make a, a good plan in terms of uh, public managers management um, for that. So I think I agree with you that we need only to focus now on how how we can use better that. So, uh, so very good. Um, thank you very much, um, Fernanda and Bruno for, for the, the discussion. We would like to have more time so we can go through through uh, all this context, but I only have time for one last question. Uh, so I'll ask Bruno to uh, not only the mobility area is implemented by all the, pro that is impacted by all the projects that uh, you have, but the energy area as well. So it's important to say that one uh, project for one specific area can impact different areas in the city. So can you uh, give us an example on that um, in terms of the projects that uh, WRI already developed? Oh, regarding energy. Okay, so uh, first of all, like we, we have been working, I'm from the active mobility team, but we have like the urban development team and also the urban mobility team as well in, in the cities program here in Brazil. The, uh, the urban mobility team, they, they have been working a lot with uh, e-buses. So they, are, they have more than one project, not only in Brazil, but in other countries in Latin America to, to push for, for this change in the public buses of the city to forbid to be uh, electric. And also that's interesting connecting to what Fernanda just said about the, the energetic matrix. Because, for example, in China, we have like some big cities with a huge fleet of e-buses, but they, are, uh, they don't have the, their energy. It's not uh, renewable. It's not sustainable. It comes from coal, uh, I, I, I believe. And here in Brazil, uh, we could have like this, the whole process to be very sustainable once we uh, keep pushing for this change in our fleets from uh, from gas to, to electric because we have uh, sustainable sources. So that's something that we are working on in Brazil and it's totally connected to, to complete streets and to your mobility uh, and energy. Great. Yeah, I think that we are close to the end. The time. Yeah, great. So we have uh, sustainable solutions. We have the ideas, we have the, the, the projects. So that's a very uh, big opportunity that we have uh, in terms of the future. Can I, can I add something very sure. quickly? Can sure. I very quickly, uh, just to add on something that Bruno said, uh, China has a, 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 a electrified fleet, of course, in buses and in cars as well. They are trying to electrify their fleets on the urban centers, despite the fact that, that they have their uh, uh, power come from uh, coal. But this is something very clever. This is not this is not useless. This is energetic planning because the problem of China is the pollution of the Uber, urban centers. So when they put the fleet of electric vehicles, they are uh, putting the pollution away. They are putting the pollution on the side of the cities and they are cleaning the cities. This is something that was thought. So they are trying to get rid to the commission their uh, thermal power plants on coal until 2050, that's their plan. If they're gonna do it or not, we don't know, but it's their plan. So they are, they are putting the electric vehicles to get rid of the problem of the, the, the population health in the, in the first time, and they are trying to, and they make their policies of energetic in order to decommission their uh, uh, coal power plant in the future. So this is something, this is something that is not sustainable in the first place, but it's uh, uh, very clever on, on the civil society uh, perspective. Great, so it's a strategy view, vision, uh, right, so great additional information, Fernanda, thank you very much. So thank you all uh, for the participation uh, here today in this side event. Uh, now we are closing to the end and I'm gonna call Jamie Easton now from the studio of Tomorrow City.
Thank you very much. this side event indeed thank you very much we've looked real solutions in latin american cities while providing better urban services to their citizens before we close we'd like to remind you that all the content broadcast live today will be made available to the smart city community via the tomorrow city platform which features state of art content about cities innovation and sustainability remember that you already have a wealth of relevant content available on the platform for those of you who are interested in urban issues. Thank you very much again to all our audience members for joining us. You are the community and the authentic driving force behind this shared knowledge. We hope you feel part of this network of individuals committed to achieving a more resilient future. And stay tuned because we hope to see you soon in our upcoming sessions. In any case, don't forget you cannot miss appointment with Smart City Expo World Congress in November, where we will gather the most relevant voices of the sector.